Today we're going to talk about abdominoplasty. Now, the function of the abdominoplasty is really to make the abdomen flat. There are two things you do when you do an abdominoplasty. You tighten the muscles on the abdominal wall, and this is the thing that makes the, the abdomen flat. And the second thing is you remove skin. Pretty much you remove the skin from the belly button to the pelvis. So what you end up doing is taking off the bottom half of the skin, then stretching the top half to cover the entire abdomen. When you stretch the, the top half of the um, abdominal panis, when, as you stretch it, it'll get thinner. So if you think of it, if you stretch something to twice the length, it'll go to half the thickness. So that's how you're really thinning the upper half of the abdomen. Now, the person who has to have an abdominoplasty is a person who has a distended round abdomen because the muscles and the fascia on the abdominal wall are weak. This usually happens after pregnancy, but can happen after weight loss. But um, generally, if the person's stomach is round because of fat and skin, and if the muscles are strong, then liposuction becomes an option to make the stomach flat. If the stomach is round not because of the excess fat, uh, a thin person, or if it's round because um, the, uh, the uh, muscles are weak, then that's the person who has to have an abdominoplasty because in order to make the stomach flat, you have to tighten the muscles. So that's generally, you know, the idea of who needs a tummy tuck. I mean, when we look at this photograph, this is a thin person who needs a tummy tuck because the muscles are round, because of the, the stomach is round because the muscles are weak. There's not a lot of fat. This is not a heavy person. There's not a lot of fat. So the stomach is not round because of fat. It's round because the muscles are weak. So after tightening the muscles, we can get the abdomen flat. So that's the thing that determines who, who needs a tummy tuck. Now, Liposuction is responsible for making the waist narrow and making the curves. We did liposuction here on the waist, and that's what makes the, 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 the curves and makes the narrow waist. The tummy tuck does not really do a lot to bring in the waist and make curves. The tummy tuck's function is to make the abdomen flat, so that's exactly what it does. What we physically are doing when we do a tummy tuck is, is we're making an incision low down in the pelvis, Raising up, and usually that incision is the length is uh, for a typical tummy tuck due to um, fascia stretch during pregnancies from hip bone to hip bone. You're raising a flat, so you're making this incision low down in the pelvis. You're raising a flat from the pelvis all the way up to the ribs. Then you're tightening the muscles. You tighten the muscles by imbricating the muscles and sewing them closed. This is the main function, the main thing, the strength. This is what makes the stomach flat. So you're imbricating the muscles leaving the bottom half of the belly button in place. And then we are removing the skin from the belly button down and stretching this skin all the way to the bottom, making a new top half of the belly button and then sewing through the old bottom half of the belly button and then closing the wound below. You can see part of the wound here and we're making the, trying to get the wound exactly where the underwear would be, exactly where the bikini would be. The three things that make a good tummy tuck I, these are the things that I think make a good tummy tuck. One, the scar is exactly where you want it, low, hidden by the bikini. Two, the scar around the belly button is hidden inside of the, inside of the navel, not outside. You know, only see a scar out here, you want it to be hidden inside. And the last thing is that the top of the abdomen is flat, at least as flat as the bottom, maybe even tighter. A lot of problems that people have with abdominoplasty is that the top is looser and the, and the bottom is tighter. That's because when you do the tummy tuck, it is physically harder to tighten the top half of the belly button, the top half of the abdomen above the belly button, and very easy to tighten the bottom half. So a lot of times the complication is, or the problem is, is that this sticks out to here and then this is flat. And that's abnormal. You know, we can have the top and bottom the same, the top a little bit tighter than the bottom is normal, you know, every supermodel is like this, but this is abnormal where the top is out and the bottom is flat. That's abnormal. And that's what we want to avoid all the time when we're doing the tummy tuck. So I think those are the three things that are important to do to get a good result from the tummy tuck. So that's kind of an overview of um, what we're trying to do with the tummy tuck. Um, and then also we told you about physically what we're doing, you know, how to mechanically we're doing it. Now the recovery. Recovery of the tummy tuck hurts. The first two days hurt a lot. It's like C-section type of pain. 
sharp pain, you're tight, you're bent over, you don't want to move, you don't want to walk, you don't want to shake. So the important thing, you know, is doing that moving to prevent problems and to open up the lungs in the beginning, which is hard for the, hard for the patients. The second day people feel better, they're moving a little bit more, they're getting up, they're walking, they're walking slow, they're bent over, they're deliberate, they don't want to shake. Now, um, it takes, you know, at least, you need at least two weeks off after the tummy tuck, and probably three weeks would be better. Um, very few people are ready to go back at activity at a week. Most people at a week are still bent over and walking very slow. By two weeks, most people get a normal gait and are feeling better. But three weeks off is actually even better than two weeks. Um, so that's kind of you know what to expect in that recovery. It's a little bit rough the first 48 hours, then eases up, and then you're walking slow, you're guarded for the next two weeks. Two weeks you start to loosen up, get a normal gait, moving a little bit more normally, um, two to three weeks off of work. Now, it takes three months, maybe even four months, to get 90% of the swelling to resolve. So, you know, you will still be swollen, you know, at three weeks after this surgery. Um, three months, 90% of the swelling is gone. The scars and things will improve one year, two years after the scar will get flatter and better and smoother. Um, now, that is kind of the idea of the, well, of the recovery. But now the activity. You cannot do any lifting, pulling, or exercise for four to six weeks after the surgery. You're waiting for strength to, to for these all these plications and tightening the muscles to get strong. If you do too much too early, they will rip. The wound could the room could separate. Your plications on your abdominal muscles could rip. So you cannot do any exercise for four to six weeks afterwards. In four to six weeks, you can start doing some exercise and things like that. Um, again, no three months for all the swelling to go, to go away. Um, that is the idea of the recovery. The complications. Complications you have to worry about. Um, one is the wound separating. You know, the wound separating, that could be a complication. Um, uh, hematoma, that's a blood bleeding under the skin flap. That would be the, you know, one side or one area bulging. Small hematoma, you just let it heal by itself. A large hematoma, you could have to go back to surgery and drain it. Infection. Mild infection, treat with antibiotics, it goes away, that's fine. A severe infection or an abscess, you have to go back to surgery and drain it. Um, necrosis of the flap, this happens in smokers especially, and sometimes in heavier people and in smokers. The blood supply is very low to this portion of the flap after you raise, after you raise up that skin pedal, because when you raise the skin pedal, you destroy some of the blood vessels. So the skin could die right here, especially in a smoker. So smoking in tummy tuck is very dangerous and you have to really stop smoking, be committed to stop smoking before um, a tummy tuck if you don't want to have any problems and things like that. Um, the other things can be, you know, related to, to anesthesia. You know, allergy to anesthesia, atelectasis, which is lung collapse with anesthesia, um, pneumonia, um, throat spasm, all these type of things that could happen anytime you have general anesthesia. The other thing we have to worry about is blood clot. Whenever you have general anesthesia, your muscles are paralyzed, your blood vessels dilate, blood could still in your leg and clot. If it clots in your leg, it's called a deep vein thrombosis. The sign of that would be one leg swollen and painful, the other one normal. If the clot breaks from the leg and goes to the lung, it's called a deep, uh, deep, uh, pulmonary embolism, and that would cause shortness of breath or chest pain. So these are the complications I think you have to think about with the tummy tuck. So, you know, in, in closing, the, the, the tummy tuck is needed for one of two reasons. Either the muscles are very weak or the skin is very redundant. And that's what the tummy tuck does. It takes away extra skin and it also tightens the muscles. So those are the people that have to have a tummy tuck who could not have liposuction. If the muscles are weak, you have no choice but a tummy tuck. The other thing we, you know, we want to always think about is pregnancy. You should not really plan on, you should really try to um, um, do your tummy tuck after you've completed your pregnancies because you can have problems with pregnancy due to the muscle tightening. The, the muscle tightening, you can get a tear or develop a hernia, or you can have problems with the pregnancy with the a stomach expanding, the baby going down to the pelvis. So you don't want to be doing the tummy tuck, you know, before uh, pregnancies, uh, you know, if you can help it. Now, um, the the uh, you know the the thing about the uh, the tummy tuck and the the things about the length of the scar, the length of the scar needs to be the area you're dealing with. 
So example, in this patient, the skin and the muscles are weak in this area, so we need a scar at that length. If you had problems with skin all the way around the body, then you could have to carry the scar all the way around the body. Pretty much, however long the scar is, that's the area you can work on. So if you need to just work on the front, the scar from hip bone to hip bone. If you need to work on the sides, the scar three quarters of the way around. If you need to work on the buttocks, the scar all the way around. So that's kind of the idea, you know, of the length of the scar. Um, so this is um, a general idea of the, um, the tummy tuck and what it can and cannot do. Uh, and I uh, appreciate you watching the video and uh, we'll try to make more videos and uh, continue with the video education. Mm -hmm. Take care. This is the uh, end of the video.